Hi there, it's Bro, and today we close the level 2 technical content about ZOS. So we are going to talk now about uh, Z Open Automation Utilities. Automation help us improve productivity, uh, avoid errors. On JCL video, we saw already some ways to get our MVS programs to run, to pass data to it. But sometimes we want to go further. Uh, we want to go with more, have more flexibility, more control about what we are going to do. And the Z Open Automation Utilities let us uh, have more control about our, our script. Let us uh, expand our solution, get more productivity uh, through uh, the use of shell commands, scripts, uh, other programming languages like uh, Java, Python. Bring together uh, the language that we want uh, with traditional MVS programs. We can have a way uh, to execute our programs in a synchronous way because uh, when we do that through JCL, that's remitted, that will run, but we do not have too much control about that. And here, uh, we, we have more than just remit jobs. Uh, we have the possibilities uh, to call these programs direct, uh, handle data sets, uh, work with some system attributes like uh, Parm libs, proc libs, also submit the jobs, and get log from the console. So let's just get it started uh, using that through the shell, and then Let's move for a Python program where we get started with Python. It's not a full course about Python, but just the basic concepts you need to get started putting together the ZOL inside of the Python program. And this is my VS Code and I have here my terminal, so I'm gonna connect with SSH to get it started. Okay, so let's clear the screen and as I said, uh, we can interact with data sets. So the first thing I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna list the data set. So let's try the common DLS to list the data set and check if the data set exists. As it returns, uh, it, it was able to list the data set, so this is the output we get here. Another common command is the echo, so when we uh, include something here on the echo, we can uh, direct that output to another place. So, for example, uh, this echo hello world. Let's send that uh, to our file hello. And let me, click, let me use the catch command and see what is inside of that. And there we go, we have the hello world. So, let me clear and here we have also the, the echo, dataset echo, so we can do the same thing, so we put here the hello world and send that uh, to a dataset. So let's use uh, the member hello uh, from this dataset that we can see here on this explorer. So the myid.demo. Uh, the member hello, it doesn't exist. So let's see now that the command run the plan refresh the Zoo Explorer, we see the member there and the the message we use it inside of that. So this is another example that connect these two words. So uh, let's go now uh, to another example uh, for grab. Grab is also very useful uh, to filter and uh, to find the strings and data sets and comments and so we have now the dataset grab and let's work, let's look for uh, the giraffe word on this member, on this dataset, on this full PDS. So that, that does it. It, it will uh, look all the members and bring uh, in, each in each member it finds uh, the string. So for example, uh, if it's for example, let's see here. Uh, in this example, uh, we found that on just one job too, and in two lines. So if we see here, let's open that through Zoe and select that. We can see that there is two giraffe here, and there you go. So these two lines, it was uh, appeared for us through the graph. 
and that does that allows us to do a lot of things so let's clear and uh, continue to check other options we have here so we can list jobs so here it went to this SDSF it went to the spool and uh, bring to us uh, what is with our IDs there and if check here on this explorer exactly the same the same entries that there is uh, on the spool right now we mentioned that you can send comments so let's see the upper comment here we pass the comment we want to use the console comment for example ga and iso star so uh, it will bring to us all the iso tasks that are running so the tasks from the osmf uh, we can also work uh, with the console we can get the recent uh, lines of the console to work in the script in the program or just here through the log through the shell so that's awesome and allow us a, a new world of possibilities uh, to create scripts uh, we mentioned that we can work uh, with parm leaves proc leaves so for example here this command uh, the print parm bring to us uh, the parm leaves that are uh, active that was used uh, for our system okay uh, these are just some examples that we can use uh, here but we can uh, extend that from any language that can uh, can call shell commands or can use shell scripts but now let's get started and put that together with Python program a uh, Python uh, if it's new to you uh, I will get started from the basics so you can uh, you can get and understand very well some concepts that you need to use on the zero to challenge you're gonna see that it's very readable uh, with considerably easy syntax so th this is uh, one of the reasons that it's why it's very popular language so let's uh, get started with this demo file here. So this demo.py. I'll clear here. And uh, to get started, let's see how we print our hello world here. And that's all you need to do to get the message printed is write the print function here and pass the string you want to print. So to run that, we're gonna use the command Python tree here and pass the name of the file. So Python tree demo py and there we go, the hello world. Okay, uh, we're gonna need some variables here. So let me change this command a bit and let's create the variable name. And I will pass here uh, my view as a string for this variable. So we don't need to uh, declare that variable as a string. It will uh, understand that this is a string. We replace it, uh, the word here to our name, and there are multiple ways to concatenate that. Here I'm just uh, passing uh, using the comma uh, to pass the variable name. And look, this is one of the advantages of using VS Code: is it identifies the variable define and then shows the kind of that, the type of that for me. So let's print it. Let's let's try it out. And there we go. We have the hello build here. Uh, we can also uh, import uh, other pieces of code to make use here. So for example, now let's just update it to get my user ID. I will use a model, uh, OS, so I use import OS here. And I will now uh, have a, a variable where I'm going to store my user ID. So I use here uh, user ID equal and let's uh, take os uh, dot and let's get and so get environment variable and let's pass here a string that identifies uh, which variable so uh, user and that should get my user id the user id that is running this project so let's change a bit here the sprint uh, to display uh, so uh, the user ID, and let's concatenate that. 
uh, again in a different way. So the user ID of uh, Bill, so my name is and pass uh, the other variable, the variable user ID. So now when we save that uh, and run the program again, we should have both variables here. Yeah, there we go. Okay, uh, we saw here how we can uh, use variables import code. So now let's import, uh, it's a different way of importing that, but let's import uh, the Zoho uh, modules uh, that make use of uh, the Python APIs for Zoho. So let's import here uh, from uh, Zoho utilities by and from this, let's use the model the system that let us uh, work uh, with the system. So to get it started, I will start uh, using uh, getting the param leaves, the active param leaves. So let me define a new variable here to get the param leaves, and let's call that the system. And the model that we're gonna use, the function we're gonna use, is the least param leaves. List param leaves. And let's pass here. Let's open and close this parentheses. Now we should have a list of the active perm leaves. So if we display that, let me comment out this and add another screen to display that for us to check how it returns. And this is another type of variables. And you're gonna see that this is an array, a list. And as it is a list, let's iterate uh, through this. So let's comment out and add a fork here. You're gonna note that the fork is a bit different from other languages. So I'm gonna take this from this snippet and uh, I will iterate with each item but I also want to get the index and the default for doesn't give me the index so I'll use this so this list index the first variable and the second the item the prime lead and uh, this is uh, each item of the active prime leaves so if I print that let's see how it looks like so I will add here the list index and the prime lead so like we did before, uh, split it by comma, it should uh, display the zero and which one is the zero. And let's save that and try it out. Oh, yeah, uh, I forgot one thing. Uh, to get this index, I will add here uh, enumerate another function from Python that will provide the first variable for me. So now we should have both. So the index and the X. In the river. Now, uh, the idea is getting in a report about uh, the parameters that we have. So let's modify this a bit. Uh, first of all, I will create a variable report here, so then I can uh, get started with my report. So report for, and let's pass my user. And let's change a bit the for. You're gonna note that each function is for it has to has this uh, two points, and the indentation is what tells what's inside of this report. So when I get started, uh, I will get started with this slash n that is uh, a new line, a break line, and the second line I will add here the report, and let me add some string here. So just getting uh, what I have read and I will use this string function to convert the index in a string, otherwise it will be uh, an int. And let's get here uh, some text. So it's a number also, let's say please. And for each prime league, let's display that. We will add here 
they are the variable that can live on the ribbon. Uh, if we try this, let's save. Let's print out the report. This is it that's working. Not safe. If I run that right now, we should get the report. As I said, the dentation defines if this is part of the four or not. So, for example, if I save here, you're gonna see a lot of prints as the report is being made. So, for example, let's see, let's run that, and there we go. We have a, a print for every iteration. So, let's uh, return that. And okay, we have a report. What about if we save that? So, let's import here another function from Visual Activities and the data sets. So, now uh, we're gonna uh, use the function create from data sets to write this report into a member. So let's use here datasets.write and we have to pass the dataset name. So in this case, uh, we'll be a member of a PDS. So let's use our dataset from the demo and pass the name of the member. If the member doesn't exist, it will create. And let's add here farm libs. And now what we want to write there. So let's pass the report. So our variable will be right in there. If we save and run that, we should get the report uh, and then that should be right in, into our PDS. But this is almost everything you need to complete these all challenges. So that's not too really complicated and I'm sure you're gonna do it. So you're gonna make it. So uh, pay attention on every hint and tell me on the comments if you are enjoying these videos. So bye bye and see you on the level 3 videos that I'm gonna start doing soon.